Good afternoon, I'm Steve Tillman and you're coming to us in the big city of Jacksonville, Florida. Where we're riding with you on a 2006 Angler 2600 center console powered by twin 225 Mercury four strokes. As many of you know, these are the Mercuries that were built by Yamaha for Mercury. Only thing that makes them Mercury is the color that they are. They're black and the fact that they say Mercury on the side of them. Let's get up close and take a look. Okay, boy, you wanna see a nice one? She's sitting, first of all, on a Continental tandem axle trailer that has a GVW. She was built in July of 05, which really makes her no six. She has a 9,600 pound GVW. Take out the trailer, she's probably got a net carrying weight of somewhere around uh, 8,000 pounds, 8,200 pounds. Just in really great shape. She's got the big two and five sixteenths inch uh, coupling up front, two speed winch up front, and while we're doing it, let's just look at the boat. Center line is in beautiful condition, actually all the way down. I've been all over this boat, and I've just seen very minimal signs of being fished. Although, the guy was a little sloppy right here on the side. Not into the gel coat, but the decals are nick on the port and on the starboard side. One of three things you can do with them. Live with them and leave them alone. Take them off, call Angler and get them to send you some more. Or replace them. Or take them off and put your name on the side of the boat. Just decals. My gut feeling is that the boat was in a dry storage slip somewhere. When I see this and I see these uh, sea clamps as clean as these are, not corroded, the boats generally were kept in a uh, dry storage slip somewhere. Just as clean as she can be. Just as clean as she can be, both sides. This is where we've been running it. This is how you, uh, this is how you flush them. The serial number on the, uh, I'll come back and get that. Clean as she can be. Out drives look great. The guy's not hurt them. Yamaha, what does that tell you? Yamaha Saltwater 2 Series. I'm telling you, these are Yamaha engines painted black. Do your research and you'll know it. I just bought and put on a brand new ladder and mounted it right there. Let me tell you what else I did with that joker. I filled it full of foam. I put spray foam in it. And if you drop it, look at that transom door. That's where I'm dragging my big Marlin or Selfish through. I'm not going to try and hustle him over the side. When I, when I get about a 300 pound marlin or a big sailfish on, big tuna coming right through that door. Or if I'm going scuba diving or snorkeling, recess trim tabs, little light spot right there, I'll fix that for you. Box seem to be recarpeted, most of them do. But let me tell you, I got one little spot right there. I fixed that and I fixed that. But just a good looking unit. Just a good looking unit. I want you to look at this boat. That is a big boat. Oh yeah! I'd rather have a sailfish or a contender or a regulator, but not at three times the price. Not at three times the price, not at two and a half times the price. This boat is one hell of a value on the market. New Taco Grand Slam Outrigger holders, new lights up top, new speakers, new AM FM stereo CD player. Big boat. All right. We're going to put it in the water and show you what time it is. First, we're going to look at these engines real quick. Let's do that. Hey, what I did, I just, it already had the bracket on it, but what I did is I bought this, I bought this uh, new wind line ladder. Nice ladder. It's got about a 300 and 400 pound something um, 
capacity, and I tell you what I did, it weighs 12 pounds. And I said to myself, well, I could, if anybody out there is as silly as I am, if somebody dropped this thing, they'd be sick about it. So let me tell you what I did. I took all these end caps off, and I filled it with a full spray foam. And you can actually put it in the water right now. See, I, some of it dripped. I haven't finished cleaning it. You can actually put it in the water right now, and she'll float. She'll float. These things were blue, this boat cost you another seven or eight thousand dollars. Lucky you, they're black. Okay, let me take these cowlings off. I just want you to see them. I hadn't waxed them, they need to be waxed. Okay, previous owner was aggressive in his use of corrosion block. Matter of fact, you can see where some of it's still built up here just a little bit. Was aggressive and therefore. And the oil's clean on both of them. So we just changed the oil on them. Therefore, they're they're corrosion free. They do have see how see how aggressive he was? See how that spray? And that that's not liquid. That that's it's, it's see it's even it, you can't even wipe it off. The guy was very methodical about saving his engines from the elements. Four-stroke Yamahas, any way you look at it, you can't even take them to a mercury dealer and get them fixed. Serial number on the starboard engine, one Bravo, 206-710. She's a 225. She's a 225 XL four-stroke. She weighs 597 pounds. Can you? All right. All right, here we go now. Port engine. Same deal. See how there? See that's not, it's not dripping. It's there. The guy must have sprayed them with several coats, because I'm telling you, I mean, I've seen them with corrosion on them. The spark plugs are behind these cases right here. And this guy, same deal, we changed it well on this side too. The guy was just methodical about changing, I mean not changing, but uh, putting uh, corrosion block on his engines. Okay, just so you can see. All right, the, this, uh, this serial number, one Bravo. What, I can't see it. Okay, port serial number, one Bravo, 05085. Same deal on the weight. Counter rotating on this side. All right, just another look at the trailer without the boat on it. I wanted you to see it. I mean, really, other than just having these bunks recarpeted, just in really decent shape. This is just the way I, this, these springs are fine. Surface rust, fine, okay? Just need to recarpet those bunks. Okay, waste water pump out right there. Obviously, a port side transfer right there. Fresh water. And let me tell you something. That is good water pressure. That is good water pressure for a fresh water. Let me tell you. If you if you get squid and shrimp and fish guts and everything all over you, then boom, you're back here. You're rinsing them off and you're rolling. Okay, nice to have. All right, just to show you. Uh, big oversized live wheel on the back and all you have to do is just put that plug in there like that. She's got a nice light down in the bottom and she'll fill right up. And uh, you know, you're going to course right there, right there you, you overflow. So, okay, and then the other thing is, a lot of people think that this is to wash your boat down. This is for your kids to uh, spray you down. Now let me tell you something. If you don't think that is some water pressure, you ain't paying attention. You could literally, you could literally, that's a 15 foot hose. That's a 15 foot hose. And boy, let me tell you something. That is some water pressure. All the fish stuff in the middle, you just get on down with it. Okay, and that live well box is filling up nicely. 
monster fish box up front, and I am and, and she is about um, 18 inches deep. She's about oh my goodness, she got to be about 39 inches wide. Macerator pump. Macerator pump pumps everything up. All right, she's gonna take wires. Got to have a place to put it. She'll go five foot right there. Nice big pump. A uh, uh, nice big, nice big fish box. All right, four rod holders up front. Nice area to put a couple hundred feet of rope and anchor chain. Anchor goes right there. Nice pop up cleat on the bow. Nice feature on these lights. What they do is they, they pop them up and boom, and it's up, okay? And then if you want it down, bump it and it goes back down. I right, just want to show you, at the bow of the boat, to the top, almost 38 inches on an angle. Nice handrail. Okay, midship, 32 inches probably about as high as you're going to get. Alright, and then look at the foot rail. If you're out and you're tangled up with some big bottom fish, you are hooked in and your knees, you, if you go over the side, you want to. Okay, rod holders on both sides. Just a big boat. Monster fish box up front. Okay, any way you count it, just a nice big boat. Big. Nice outrigger holders. Both sides. Lights. The work. New anchor light. Right there. Just a nice setup. Big boat. Big solid boat. Powered with four strokes. Just a huge boat. But not so big that you can't handle it by yourself. I take this boat out by myself in a heartbeat. Though they have Bridget Lee with me. Or Captain John. The kind of options you see on expensive boats. Nice gunner. Through, stainless steel through holes for your oversized cleats. Pop up cleats in the front like that. Those are the kind of things you expect to see. Taco Grand Slam outrigger holders. Very expensive. These were $175 for these big 6x9 uh, speakers. Nice electric box with Okay, nice compass, twin tacks, and we we'll use their gauges for twin voltmeters, um, fuel gauges only hooked up because it's only got one tank right here. The water temperature gauges are not hooked up, don't know why. Trim tabs that work up and down. Okay, salt water uh, wash down you saw, the live well you saw. The fish box macerator, mask that on and off. Bilge pump, nav lights, fresh water you saw, courtesy lights, which are and spreader lights. Let's see, John. Okay, you are lit up. You can run offshore at night and come back. And let me tell you, clean fish until midnight because you got light. Okay, you want to talk about lighting up your uh, cockpit? Right there, brother. You're lit up.